Sometimes I try to understand your reasons Why you choose to feel the way you feel about me And sometimes when I turn around And you're there like today I want to say Why me? I look at you and I get this feeling Why me? I know it's true but I can't believe it I keep on wondering why I'm such a lucky guy Why me? I look at you and I ask myself Johnny Logan, coming home in triumph from the song contest in Malmo. It's a funny thing, the Eurovision, you know. It turns up every year like a bad penny. Everyone gives out stink about it. But a lot of people still seem to watch it and even enjoy it. And all over Europe, millions of consenting adults jumping up and down in the privacy of their own homes. Doesn't bear thinking about it. Here's a man who spread more than his fair share of Eurovision mania across the continent. Johnny Logan himself bringing back to Ireland another fine example of the glass blower's art. The old mantelpiece must be getting crowded. That's the third of these he's brought back. And here to meet him is old pal and mine, Shay Healy. It was Shay who wrote the song that started it all for Johnny back in 1980. There they are on the stage together. Oh, I remember it well. The Hague in 1980. All that hair. All those sideburns. He was looking younger as well. Looking out for you, but you're not here. What's another year? The day after Johnny first won the Eurovision, he and Shay arriving back from The Hague. Nobody at Dublin Airport that day knew the trouble that Johnny was walking into. Least of all, Johnny himself. You can imagine you had the combination of a young man, Johnny Logan, just starting out on a career singer and you had me 37 years old broke had a bottle of champagne which i was drinking by the neck and i think we felt that winning the contest uh, was all we had to do and that everything else would fall into place automatically we didn't understand that uh, the record business is a business and that it depended on management and record company executives and all the kinds of support you need to keep the act going and johnny didn't realize that and i didn't realize it very soon we were to find that uh, both of us were in quagmires of slightly different consistencies but we were stuck in the bog he was naive and uh, no more than myself he didn't realize how to maximize the business opportunity at that time before he won the eurovision johnny logan had hardly ever been in a television studio all he knew were the small dance halls scattered around the Irish countryside. And even there, it was hard to earn a crust. I think I should mention at this stage for anybody who doesn't realize it that Johnny's dad is Patrick O'Hagan, one of the great sort of Irish tenors through the years, and he now lives out in Australia. Then suddenly in 1980, he seemed to have been catapulted into the big time. He began to appear on well-known television shows all over Europe. Carry on. That I met 
it in the county. The trappings of success, the whole world seemed to be at young Logan's feet, a daunting, even frightening prospect for anyone of his age. When I won in 1980, I was very young. I was about uh, 24 years old. It was, um, it was all like a dream. It's, looking back on it, it doesn't seem really real. There was, 1980 was a year full of excitement and changes. I had to get used to a different kind of lifestyle. And then when I had all these problems or whatever, um, facing up to them. Within a few weeks of winning the Eurovision, Johnny had to start facing those problems. It turned out that he was under contract to two different managers, and not surprisingly, both of them wanted a piece of the action. For weeks, Johnny sat in Dublin's high court while his future was decided. Outside, time slipped by, opportunities were lost, and when settlement was reached, it was a costly one for Johnny. He agreed to pay both of his managers 10% of his gross earnings for the next two years. It. Applause, 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 and cue music and mix. As soon as he was free, he went back to the TV studios. For what was left of that summer, he travelled from one end of Europe to the other, singing his one Eurovision hit. And all that time, he was running up bills for planes, for limos, for five-star hotel suites. I've been waiting such a long time Looking out Senor Johnny, it all seemed to be working. He had become a star. What's another year? Top the charts in 11 European countries. And by the end of that summer, he had sold almost two million records. Johnny hoped that, in the long run, the royalties of those record sales would pay off the debts he was accumulating. But in the meantime, he needed cash badly. So he went back to where he thought he could get it, the dance halls of Ireland. Tomorrow into what I did for love. Are you ready? Moistro. Head. He set off on an ambitious tour with a very large entourage. He was doomed from the start. His band was under-rehearsed. There wasn't enough promotion. Under the strain of the road, his plans fell apart. Instead of raising cash, the tour ended up costing Johnny a lot of money. Money he didn't have. It was an exhausting and demoralizing few weeks. I forgot to mention, forgot to mention anything between the mic problems and the stream, sorry. Bam. I think I used up all my luck when I won the Eurovision in 1980 because um, I remember that when they released the follow-up single, there was a musician strike in England which lasted for three months and Top of the Pops and all the music programs were taken off the air. So when I released the follow-up, I had no television to promote it. Save me. So it was um, very difficult for me to get a follow-up hit record. Save me. Can't lose another fight. I'm falling. I'm throwing in the towel. So eventually, five months after his Eurovision win, Johnny was back in a studio recording his all-important follow-up. This was the song that he hoped would rescue his floundering career, appropriately called Save Me.
this is a very frightening time in the thing, you know, because uh, you, I've had a song that's basically made for me. You win a Eurovision and people associate, they see someone like me, totally unknown, become a, a well-known personality and everybody lives that moment with me, I think. Um, now the next one is going to be a little bit harder. Well, that's uh, Sheena Easton there and nine to five. There we go again. Now, record we've been waiting a long time to hear. It's the follow-up from Johnny Logan to his big Eurovision hit, What's Another Year, called Save Me. Save As the weeks passed, Save Me stubbornly refused to appear in any of the charts. He was still on a bit of a high. The record had gone to, to number one in 11 countries in Europe and had sold over a million records, so... His reputation was still fairly solid, but the other things in his career were not happening well. He had to deal with the internal squabbles with uh, different managers. The record company dithered on getting a follow-up. They, they say they listened to 700 songs to pick Save Me, which didn't happen for him. So at that stage, he must have been going through the first kind of stages of demoralization and suddenly realizing that it was going to take a lot of hard work to keep the momentum going. By this stage, his career was seen to be in danger of collapse. He needed to pull something out of the fire. As the year ended, Johnny had put a new small band together. His ambitions had become more modest. A short tour of Ireland was planned. It never took place. There were no bookings. Suddenly, nobody wanted to know Johnny Logan. As they say in the music business, he couldn't get arrested. It depends greatly on how, how, how I managed to pull my... What, what's left of me now when I pull myself together after Christmas. You I feel you need pulling together? Very much so. I, I feel the sort of the pressures of all the travelling and that kind of thing. Um, I'm still racing. Mentally, even though I may, may take a week off or two weeks, I, I think I'll still be racing. I need three weeks with my wife and with my, my, my child to sort of just to show, come down off the high that I've been on. Clear your head. Clear my head. Oh, at the end of 1980, um, I felt kind of rejected. I felt, I think I took it very personally, you know. Um, uh, I think that the lack of record success, the court cases that I was involved in, it just seemed like there was no end to it, you know, that it was going to go on forever. And actually it did go on for four and a half years and it was, it, it, it was very, very difficult to live with. Very, very hard to handle. And if you're asking me what I feel, what I felt like by the end of 1980, broken. And when times got rough, there was just about enough, but they saw Over the next seven years, audiences in Ireland turned away from Johnny, but he kept on singing, slowly working his way down the ladder of success. He had seven years in the wilderness, and uh, it was quite ignominious for him. He had fallen from grace in the eyes of the Irish public, and yet he continued to plug away. He did small bad gigs for small money. I found that um, after 1980, not having a follow-up, the hole just got bigger and bigger and darker and darker. And the only way that I could actually get records played on radio again or get another hit record and lose the one-hit wonder tag was to do the Eurovision again and to win it, not just to do it, to win it. So that's what I um, decided to do, or to try and do. Don't. And so, it was at this dark point in his life that he set off on the Eurovision trail once again. Shay Healy made a very good comment to me. He said to me once, um, in 1987, I said, Shay, I really want to do this song. It's a very personal song, and I feel very strongly about it. And he said, well, do it. And I said, well, if I don't win, you know, people will laugh at me. And he said, Sean, people already have laughed at you. You've got nothing to lose. I know tonight could be all I'll have with you. 
From now on, you'll be with someone else instead of me. So tonight, let's fill this memory for the last time. Forever in love What do you say when words are not enough? Time When he sang Time in Ireland's song contest in 1987, few in the audience realized how desperate his situation was. He was heavily in debt. He'd been forced to sell his home. He even had to borrow from the bank to get enough money to record his winning song. Irish audiences had turned their backs on Johnny Logan, and he needed to win them back. In 1980, he had too many managers, too much advice. In 1987, he was on his own. There were no limos, no luxury hotel suites. He had no manager, no agent, no record contract. Win or lose, when he went to Brussels, it all rested on his own shoulders. What can I say now my words are not enough? The morning of the 1987 contest. Johnny is up early, talking through what lies ahead with his old partner, Shay Healy. In over 30 years, nobody had ever won this contest twice. By this stage, it wasn't enough for Johnny merely to do well for Ireland. He had to win. He wanted to win so badly uh, to prove to himself that he wasn't mad, to prove to the Irish public that they had been wrong, that he did have the quality to prove that not alone could he sing, but he could write a winning song and to prove to all of Europe that uh, you can never write off an Irish man. This is it, the moment of truth for all singers in the Eurovision. All their hopes and fears focus on the next three minutes. Johnny Logan is looking and singing better than ever and represents Ireland in this year's Eurovision Song Contest with his own ballad, Hold Me Now. Don't, don't close your heart to how you feel. Dream, don't be afraid the dream's not real. Close your eyes. After the performance ends, the most difficult period begins. The waiting, the awful waiting. We're calling Norway. Good evening, Norway. Can I have your points, please? Good evening, Brussels. Oslo calling. Here are the results of the Norwegian jury. France, one point. France, one point. La France, un point. Israel, two points. Israel, two points. Israel, two points. Who came second in last year's Eurovision? The year before? In this contest, there's only one winner. A 
when I went to the Eurovision. I was very, very determined. Very determined. I tried to inspire not just myself, the singers that were working with me. I learned about making a team work. I was strong by the time I got to the Eurovision. And how did it feel when I won the Eurovision in 87? Whoa. <laughs> um, top of the world, ma. Top of the world. <laughs> no? And this is what it's all about. This is why they want to win the Eurovision Song Contest. Disappointment. Johnny had waited and worked to get back in front of these cameras to win this unprecedented success all over Europe. Well, it wasn't just in Europe that I enjoyed success. I mean, I remember in '87, um, I took Christmas, I took my family and my brother Michael to Australia to see our parents, and um, I remember lying on the beach in Australia, and uh, they had all these speakers on the beach, and. Uh, Hold Me Now came on. And all these girls that were sitting around and this sort of thing started singing it. And I felt like jumping up and saying, hey, that's mine. You know, I did that. Love. What do you say when words are not enough? After 1987, I haven't looked back. I've had the best five years of my life. Um, if I could change anything, I wouldn't. The last five years have been wonderful. Um, not just on a... Um, on a career, on a music level, but on a personal level as well. Everything's gone great for me. And then, five years later, just when he thought it was safe to turn on your television, he turned up again at Ireland's national contest, this time as a writer, determined to give the old Eurovision one last final fling. And sometimes I watch you passing through my It was just like sort of people had always said to me after the second one, will you ever do it again? You know, why don't you do it three times? And I suppose uh, I just wanted to see, could I? We have a winner. The winner of the 1992 Eurovision Song Contest is Ireland. The song, Why Me? Well, I wish I could say I was surprised. Short of conducting the orchestra or staging it in his own back garden, Charlie Logan's just about done it all in the Eurovision. And in his latest moment of glory, he remembered his old partner from the first win back in 1980. Shay Healy, a friend of mine who wrote What's Another Year. Shay, this is for your father and for mine. And to win it three times is one of the most extraordinary things, stories of show business in my lifetime. It will never be equaled. And he has entered the book of legend. And I think he deserves it. There's no point in me doing it again. There's, um... And there's nothing else to prove. Sometimes I watch you passing by my window And sometimes I watch you passing through my dreams And sometimes when I look at you, you take my breath away Sometimes I try to understand your reason You choose to feel the way you feel about me And sometimes when I turn around And you're there like today I wanna say 
why me? I look at you and I get this feeling, why me? I know it's true, but I can't believe it. I keep on wondering why my love shines in your eyes. Why me? I look at you and I ask myself, 